Coming up on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. It's a look back at some of our favorite stories from John Deere. Find out about their great tools and equipment that can help improve your operations bottom line. Now, from the Denver headquarters of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association, it's NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Hello and welcome to this week's special edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. This week, we're taking a look at some of our favorite stories from our friends at John Deere. We'll head into the field for expert advice on some tools and equipment that farmers and ranchers can use to help improve their operations. Now, all farmers and ranchers are looking for machinery they can count on to get the job done. However, sometimes the choice isn't based only on performance. It's also made because of tradition. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck introduces us to a Kentucky farmer who is able to use both criteria to make his equipment decisions. In the hills just west of Litchfield, Kentucky, Black Rock Farms is a cow, calf, and hay operation run by Roger White and his family. My wife and I and my son and my grandchildren and daughter-in-law, we all farm together. My wife and I have been here for 40 years. And um, we have a what you call a cow-calf operation. We have roughly 50, 60 head of uh, brood cows that we um, uh, raise baby calves from. Half of them calve in the spring and half of them calve in the fall. And my son helps me here. Uh, if, any, if anybody's a farmer, and they know they need help sometimes. And so uh, a few years ago, we got him started into uh, helping raise cattle. And he has some cattle that are his. We, we grow them together. But I felt like to try to get him involved was to you know, let him have some time with it and uh, also enjoy the fruits of his labors. The White family also bales hay for customers in the area. And like most farmers and ranchers, Roger faces challenges every day, but he also has long-term goals that help keep him going. I guess uh, there's a couple of challenges that we have here. One is the weather. Uh, in Kentucky, uh, they, that old saying is, if you don't like the weather today, wait around till tomorrow and it changes. And it's pretty true because uh, uh, we watch the weather forecast and get ready to cut hay, and they're giving us three or four days of pretty weather. And as soon as we cut the hay down, then they start saying, oh, it's gonna rain tomorrow now. That's one of the cha big challenges we have here. Another challenge is weeds. Um, I know it's, it's happening everywhere. Seems like that uh, weed control is becoming a big problem for, for all grass farmers. Our goals is to probably grow a little bit bigger uh, over time. It's hard to find extra land because, you know, there's other people trying to gather up the farms and uh, enlarge their farms too. So, but we would like to enlarge our farm. I would like to see over time my, my son and my grandchildren take the farming operation and go on with it at, you know, at, at a later date. With weather and weeds being a challenge on Black Rock Farms, one of Roger's main concerns is putting up quality hay for his cattle to eat. Quality hay is very important. I just got back some samples from, uh, or test samples from this spring's cutting and I ended up with about 12% uh, protein on my hay, so I'm, I'm gonna be in pretty good shape on that. Uh, I started about five years ago deciding that I would try to raise better hay quality. When I can end up with 12% hay, I don't have to worry about feeding other commodities to bring the protein up on. For Roger, putting up quality bales is critical not only for his own cattle, but also for his hay customers. And he says getting the job done is made easier by having tractors and hay equipment that are easy to use and dependable every time. Naturally, the quality depends on when they cut it. But the main thing is they want it up, when they get it cut and it's cured, they want to get it up before the next rain. And so with dependable equipment like John Deere has, we're able to go out there and get the hay baled up before the next rain comes. When I go out there and hit the key, right, it always fires up. It's easy to get across ground fast. When I 
I go out there to bail, you know, you can just travel eight or 10 miles an hour, depending on the roughness of the ground. Uh, that's always a big issue too <laughs> in this part of the country. It really works real well and it helps us get it up before the, the rains. The consistency of the bales are, are always there. Uh, you have adjustments that you can tighten the density of the bale up on those and, and that's why I like the 568 and 569. They're easy to form a, a good square bale. I had a fellow to tell me that he said it looks like you just took a saw and cut them off with a saw, you know, as they come out of the baler, so. The 569 round baler is really our big seller. As Roger talked, you know, we've got, our weather is, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher for us to put up, our windows are getting narrower for putting up good quality hay. So we have really made a push to put up better quality hay and John Deere equipment being as, as, as productive and high a capacity as it is, is really a good fit because we can get it up in a good timely manner, ahead of the rains, in between the rains, that kind of thing. The six series tractors is really a good, it's a nice haying tractor. One of the challenges that we have around here is these, this isn't flatland, this is hill country. And you know, it's, it's a whole different challenge to, uh, to, to farm on the hills. When you put a round baler with a heavy round bale in it behind you, you know, that's, that's a lot of weight pushing you up and down hills. And so the 6,000 series tractors really have, they're, they're, they have a nice power to weight ratio. You know, they're a nice heavy tractor that, that's stable um, and they're comfortable and they're just, they're the right size, really the right size for pulling a five by six round baler. The 6,000 series tractors are really, really a big hit for us. Having equipment that is dependable is a major key to having a successful operation. So too is a good service team that can get you back up and running quickly when they need to. Well, at the end of the day, um, you don't have service, you don't have anything. You put the best product out there, but if you can't service it, what's the advantage? I've always believed in my life that if you take a piece of John Deere equipment and you optimize it to its fullest potential, that nobody could beat us, and I truly believe that. And so that's our job as a dealer, you know, to work with John Deere and learn from John Deere and to help these guys get the most out of their machines. It's probably the most important thing is for, uh, because if you can't get the service, you know, you're, you could be down for several days instead of just a few hours. And so it's real important. When other people are depending on me and I, I have a breakdown, then I start depending on Wright's implement. From one generation to the next, Raising cattle and hay is a tradition on Black Rock Farms, and it turns out using equipment with the iconic green and yellow paint is also a family tradition. That's why I stay with John Deere. They are, they stay, they are uh, uh, dependable. My father started out in 1949 with a little Elm John Deere, and that was the year I was born. And uh, we've been with John Deere ever since, so you might say my blood has got a little bit of green in it. Uh, in Central Kentucky, I'm Matt Fleck, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. If you'd like to learn more about how equipment from John Deere can bring value to your farmer ranch, visit the website johndeere.com. Still to come on Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll show you how John Deere equipment is making a difference for one South Carolina operation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Weeds will rob me of my investments. The weeds are not palatable to cows. They will not eat them. Or if they do eat them, they, some of them may be toxic. So there's a return on investment by allowing there to be more grass available to be grazed by the cattle. If you'd like to know more about NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and have an opportunity to support our effort to create valuable news, information, and education just for cattle producers, then check out our website, cattlementocattlemen.org. All across the nation, ranchers are feeling the effects of immune system challenges in more than one in five of their weaned calves. It's a frustrating, costly journey. But help is on the way. Purina Starter Feeds. 
Now with RX3 immune support technology, it boosts calves' natural defenses, priming their immune systems from the start. Join the fight and talk to your Purina rep to learn more. Welcome back. In the cattle business, you'll often find farms or ranches that are being run by the fourth or fifth generation. Of course, those long family traditions have to begin somewhere and with someone. Along those lines, we found one South Carolina husband and wife team who built their Angus seed stock operation together as the first generation on the land. Brian Baxter has more on how they're working to continue growing their farm while adding the second generation into the business. For more than 20 years, Kevin and Lydia Yan have worked side by side to grow their family, their farm, and their cattle business. Yan Family Farms is a first generation beef cattle seed stock operation located here in West Central South Carolina. It's an operation that my wife and I went out on our own in 1996 after having managed a purebred Angus operation. Kevin and I got married um, straight out of college. We both got degrees in animal science and we went and managed a small Angus operation for about seven years. And then um, after, in 1996, we um, started chasing our dream and the primary thing that we do is produce um, seed stock or Angus bulls. And we have two sales here a year, one in February and one in October, and we'll sell about 450 bulls through those two sales. So we're all about growing grass and growing bulls. And this operation in which um, our three children have grown up with, and um, through the years they've, they've helped build the operation and grow the operation, and they went off to school, and then they've all come back, um, bringing two spouses with them. So today we're um, Lydia and I, our three children, and, and um, a son-in-law and a daughter-in-law here raising purebred Angus. On Yon Family Farms today, you might find daughter Sally and her husband Reed checking on cattle. Middle son Drake could be heading to the field with a baler, and the youngest, Corbin, works primarily with the crops and the haying equipment. We've got to see firsthand, you know, what all has gone into building what we have here and have helped, you know, right there alongside of our parents making it what it is today. So it was kind of a no-brainer to come back because I guess we have a lot of, uh, it's called sweat equity, is that right? Um, that's what we have invested here. So that's uh, probably the main reason all three of us decided to come home and, and I guess follow in the parents' footsteps. My brothers, I feel like, always knew they wanted to come back to the farm and I wasn't really sure throughout college. And college was a good thing for me because it made me realize that I do enjoy being outside, being with the cattle and um, really enjoyed being home and being in our community and that sort of thing. So it's been really, I would say, unique that all of us have been able to come back to the farm. As the family members supported by the farm have grown, the Yans have expanded. They added pecan production to the farm and their daughter-in-law manages a retail store called The Nut House, selling what they grow, as well as freezer beef from Yan Family Farms. Even so, top quality Angus bulls and the forage those cattle need remain the foundation of their farm. Yon Family Farms is a, a grass operation. We're a forage-based operation. Um, we try to take advantage of our long growing season here in the southeast. Our ability to grow lots of different forages um, through lots of different times of the year. Really, we're grass farmers and we use beef cattle to harvest our crop. Our cattle rely very heavily on forages and, and we try to produce high quality forages and we also try to use grazing management in ways in which we can um, allow our cattle to best utilize those high quality forages. Over time, the Yans have worked to add higher capacity machinery and to increase their ability to get hay and forage crops cut and out of the field as quickly as possible. To us, uh, you know, quality of hay is, you know, obviously about having your fertility and your grass right, but it's as much about timing as it is anything, getting it cut and baled in, in the right timing and getting it in the, in the plastic wrapped as soon as, you know, you can. Um. So we bale hay with a 560M round baler that has the pre-cut knives in it as well as the bale accumulator on the back. It's a very efficient hay baler that allows us to get in there and to make a high quality product in a, in a timely fashion. Um, we bale all types of grasses and this baler is very versatile and allows us to do just 
whatever the job is, this baler can handle it. The bale accumulator has been a great asset. Uh, it's the first one we've had, and it has really speed us up on the uh, when we do baleage. We've been really pleased with John Deere balers um, just from, number one, the bale they put up. We feel like they put up a nice, big, neat, tight bale, a bale that will stand up. Um, we've been very pleased with the service that we've gotten out of our balers. Since the Yons can't afford downtime, they work closely with Blanchard Equipment in their hometown of Ridge Spring to make sure they have tractors and balers that are ready to go when it's time to make hay. Yes, uh, uptime is a big thing. If, if John Deere didn't have a quality product, uh, a lot of people uh, wouldn't be buying it. But they, they like the ability that uh, our machine uh, does work very well. They're able to get parts, able to get service and we do have good reliability. So we've been doing business, and myself personally, um, with the Yons for over 20 something years since they've moved into here and started farming. And um, we see them on a regular basis. They're a integral part of our community, and we look forward for a long future with them. With the second generation back and working to build a future together, it's clear the Yon family still has the fire to do what they love and keep their farm sustainable for today and tomorrow. I hope we can keep trucking right on like we are. Um, I, I think it was my parents' goal whenever they came here to build something that we could come home to. And um, I think that I can speak for my siblings and I that we're you know, the same way. We want to keep growing it so that if one day if I have children and they want to come back here, they can. I think I really realized it in college, but you know, since the day I was born, I was able to look out my window and see black cattle. It was just something I kind of always took for granted growing up you know it was more um, just something we we did it wasn't really a choice for us but when I did have the choice I think that's whenever my real love for you know raising cattle really came into effect. I absolutely enjoy raising cattle I feel like one of the luckiest guys in the world that I get to wake up every day and and raise cattle and and it's something that we don't take that I don't take very lightly. It's, um, it's truly a blessing to get to do it. You know, that's, to us, that's part of the definition of sustainability is being able to have a profitable operation that you can pass down to the next generation to make it better for the, for the future and the, the next generation that's coming along. So that's pretty cool for us. Pretty cool indeed. At Yon Family Farms in Ridge Spring, South Carolina, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Don't forget, John Deere is adding more value to your NCBA membership by offering special discounts on riding lawn equipment, compact utility tractors, and more. Deere is just one of many companies offering exclusive deals. Become a member today by calling 1-866-233-3872 or visiting the website ncba.org. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, see how John Deere equipment helps a Georgia man work more efficiently on his farm. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We didn't just design the 6M tractors with you in mind. We designed them with you by our side. The new 6M tractors from John Deere. Reimagined by you, for you. With improved visibility better maneuverability, and more ways to customize, so you get everything you need and nothing you don't. Experience the new 6M at your local John Deere dealer. Are you concerned about the impact government policies could have on your cattle business? One way to make your voice heard in Washington is by joining NCBA. When you join, you'll have access to key policy updates and insights from Beltway Beef. It's the best way to hear directly from NCBA's DC team. Beltway Beef provides valuable policy information and it's free for NCBA members. Stay in touch with Beltway Beef. Join now at ncba.org. They're here, they're hungry, and they can't be stopped with ivermectin alone. Add Safeguard when you deworm your cattle to take out resistant parasites like brown stomach worm, cuperia, nematodirus, and others. With two dewormers from two different classes, you can kill more resistant worms in your cattle, so you don't leave potential on the table. Consult your veterinarian for the diagnosis and treatment of parasitism, then bite back at safeguardworks.com.
For many in the cattle business, even though they love being on the land, there's a need to have an off-farm job to provide benefits and some additional income. Then the challenge becomes finding time in the early mornings, the late evenings, and on the weekends to get the cattle cared for and all the chores done. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter takes us to Georgia for the story of one cattle producer who has become a master of balancing the demands of two different worlds. In southeast Georgia, Blizzard Farms is now in the capable hands of David Blizzard, who's the third generation to work this land. This farm has been called Blizzard Farms from my grandfather on down to me. Uh, my daddy started uh, full-time farming, I believe, 1972. And he and my granddaddy were partners. And I was uh, more or less a high school hired hand on the farm. I've got about 60 mama cows. I'm trying to get to 80 mama cows. Uh, my calving rate's usually around 90% a year. Uh, I usually use uh, three to four bulls, and I alternate different breeds of bulls about every three years just to keep them crossbreeding in check. In addition to caring for his cows, producing a hay crop, and growing sunflowers as a wildlife food plot, David has just wrapped up a full-time job as a rural mail carrier. I have had, for the last 35 years, a full-time job off the farm. Uh, I'm approaching retirement. Actually, in two days, I'll be officially retired from that. So I hope to be able to do this with a little less stress on me. And that's my plan. <laughs> Raising cattle is enjoyable. After an agitating day of delivering mail and riding up and down the road, stopping five or six hundred times a day, going out there around the cows in the afternoon or just before dark, and uh, there's a lot of therapy out there. They, they seem relaxed and it helps me relax and wind down a little bit as long as everything's going okay. Uh, I enjoy it. Working to balance his off-farm job, David developed strategies that helped him get his farm work done as quickly and easily as possible. Good grass grows good cows. If you can bale the hay in a timely manner, I cut my hay with a conditioner and I've learned to tet it as quickly as I can get to it with the conditioner to get it spread out over the ground. I'm a, pretty much a one-man operation. My wife and children, they help me move equipment up and down the road a little bit. And that's one reason I have tried to keep new equipment, good equipment that I could depend on that when I get ready to go to work, I don't have to spend that two hours in the afternoon working on it. I, need, I can take it and go ahead and, and be productive with it. Uh, those are the challenges I had. So the cattle industry in this area is uh, majority of part-time producers, I would say. 90% um, of the guys that we deal with have full-time jobs still to help supplement their uh, income. Uh, a lot of them have grown up on farms, family farms, passed down generation to generation. Um, they're trying to keep that going throughout the family. There's no doubt balancing an off-farm job can create time pressures and the potential for fatigue when it's time to tackle the farm work. Those challenges were part of the reason David decided to continue upgrading to newer, more comfortable tractors. Both my cab tractors have air ride seats in them. They're very comfortable. Uh, even if I've been sitting in them four or five hours, if I change the setting, I can change the backrest, change the armrest, change the softness of the firmness of the seat itself. Uh, and that's a little refreshing, you know, as I'm working. The tractor, the 5100 R is quick. You can turn around quick, back up to something quickly. The hydraulics are just great on it. Uh, the loader, that feather it a little bit, it, it'll pick a bale of hay up quick or it'll drop it quick. Uh, you can dump it off quick. Uh, but it is very easy to feed hay with. I stand my bales up on end in the hay rings. You can pull up to a hay ring, get your net wrap off, and dump it right in there very easy and get away from it. Uh, just, just a joy to run them. Especially since I've got two cab tractors now, I can put on pretty nice clothes and get in there and do what I want to do and get out and me and my wife go out and eat supper. I never have to take a shower or wash the dust off of it. Beyond the tractors, David recently worked with his dealer, Ag Pro, in Milledgeville, Georgia, to step up his haying capacity by getting a new round baler as well. So Mr. David um, was one of our very first customers when we came to town uh, back in 2014. He's probably one of our first hay balers that we got out in the field. He was running an older baler, twine only and uh, we stopped and talked to him about the 469 balers with the uh, net wrap option, which was a big deal for uh, 
speed when you're in the field getting done as quick as possible. We got in with him and was talking with him. And we were able to get that baler sold to him. And from there, it kind of snowballed, I guess you could say. He's, uh, he's been one of our uh, best and favorite customers to work with since we've been here in the last four years. So I made the decision to buy 469 with NetWrap and then three, I ran it three summers and now I've just traded for this 460M silage and uh, thinking that maybe in the future I may want to get into haylage, uh, but I have to take it one step at a time. Still learning, still improving, and still working to make the family farm and his cow herd better each year, David Blizzard is excited to carry on a long family tradition in the job he truly enjoys. I like baling hay. <laughs> uh, with these tractors and equipment, man, if you get in the field 40 or 50 acres in it, in six to seven hours, you can go by and you look at all those bales you dropped off, that's a good feeling. You've had a productive day. And uh, you know you got something to feed your cows through the winter. So, anyway, it's a good feeling. At Blizzard Farms in southeast Georgia, I'm Brian Baxter for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Want to rewatch an episode of Cattleman to Cattleman or catch up on anything you've missed? Then visit our YouTube page. You'll find replays of all of our shows filled with educational segments and producer profiles from all around the country. It's also another chance to see Baxter Black. So check us out at youtube.com slash Cattleman to Cattleman. Still to come on Cattleman to Cattleman, see how one Kentucky cattle producer uses John Deere equipment to put up high quality hay. Plus, we'll check in with the always entertaining cowboy poet, Baxter Black. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Join the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. NCBA is the oldest cattle industry organization working every day to defend your interests in Washington, D.C. And there are big benefits to being a member. You'll get news you can use in the National Cattlemen and policy updates from Beltway Beef, plus big discounts from John Deere, Cabela's, and more great partners. Join now. Call 866-233-3872 or sign up online at ncba.org. Now, a BQA tip from the Beef Quality Assurance Program. It's really important for cattle producers to assess their cattle handling, and National BQA has a tool to do that. No matter if you're a feedlot or a cow-calf producer, they have a National BQA Assessment Manual that helps you identify some handling issues that you may have when processing cattle through a chute. So if you can process at least 100 head and mark every time an animal slips, when they come out of the chute, if they vocalize in the chute before a procedure, if they run when they exit the chute, use an electric prod on cattle, all of those situations indicate that we have some area and room for improvement when we're handling cattle during processing. So BQA's assessment guide helps you go through and look for those components that you would like to mark down when you're processing cattle to make sure that you can make improvements where necessary or continue doing good work where you see that things are going extremely well. Find out more about Beef Quality Assurance at BQA.org. You're watching NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, your source for cattle industry information and education on RFD-TV. Welcome back. Cattlemen and women are busy people. In addition to taking care of their animals and putting up feed for them to eat, some have full-time jobs off the farm. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Matt Fleck takes us to Central Kentucky, where one farmer has found the right equipment to help him save time and still get the quality hay his cattle operation needs. In the hills of Central Kentucky, you'll sometimes find Richard and Molly Medley out checking their cattle together. It's one of the rare times when they can slow down just a bit. Richard works full time off the farm but has built his own feeder cattle and hay operation. Yeah, I've been involved in farming ever since that I was a little boy. The farm that we're actually standing on here is actually I bought it from my grandfather. And so I've been able to keep it in the family. And you know, one of my goals is to take the ground, grow cattle, produce something to feed people, but also be able to grow for the next generation. You know, hopefully we can keep this farm in the Medley family for several years to come. The way we produce feeder cattle is through a backgrounding and stalker operation. During the summer months, we graze cattle primarily on fescue and orchard grass and clover, 
and in the winter months move into more of a backgrounding confinement type of operation. Typically we buy 600 pound Angus, Angus cross cattle and buy them at 600 pounds and we usually keep them for 120 days and graze them. While this part of Kentucky offers plenty of grazing most of the year, there are times when additional feed is needed. That's why Richard focuses much of his summer on turning out high quality hay. Quality hay is very important here in Kentucky because of the winter months, you know, we have uh, confinement operations where we feed hay primarily to the cattle after the grass is gone. So we want to have quality hay because it directly impacts our bottom line and our cattle weight gain. Putting up hay means you and your equipment have to be ready to go when the weather is right. For Richard, balancing a full-time job off the farm means he puts a high priority on both speed and reliability when he chooses his tractors and hay machines. I've helped local farmers for many years and drove a lot of equipment. And you know, you want to have equipment that is easy to operate, that's reliable, and when you go to do something, you can get the job done. I also work full time during the day, so taking care of cattle, if you don't have reliable equipment, can be quite the challenge. You know, we have a lot of rain and a lot of temperate weather, and when we get into hay season, we may only have two to three hours once I get off work at five o'clock to get something done, so we can't afford to have breakdowns. So. The kind of tractors that we have here on the farm are we have a John Deere 6430 Premium and this past year we picked up a 6105 E-Series tractor. Uh, the reason we went with the 6-Series tractors is here in Central Kentucky our equipment has to be very versatile. We need tractors to mow hay, move hay, roll hay, but we also need them to scrape barns. We need them to you know, go out and just do the occasional pick up the rocks, do just different odd jobs. Another way Richard saves time in the field and gets faster dry down is by cutting his hay crop with a mower conditioner. The John Deere mower conditioner is, is really an exceptional machine. Uh, the cutter bar's got a three-year warranty um, and it's, a, it's one of the heaviest built cutter bars in the industry and gives really, really good support. We get a lot of rock in these hay fields and just kind of where we're located and it holds up really well. The conditioner options you can kind of do whatever you want. And with the conditioner, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, we're here and even today it's pretty humid and the conditioner will gain you at least one day and sometimes two in these humid climates. In years past, Richard bought hay from neighbors and for a few years he didn't own his own baler. But after working with his John Deere dealer, he added a round baler that works for him. My 567 round baler, I really like it. It's very easy to operate. Uh, like I said, I went for the first five or six years of my operation without owning a roll baler for the fear of, I don't know how to roll hay. I, I think it could be difficult. <laughs> but after a 10 minute session with my dealer, I realized, well, that belief was all wrong. <laughs> so the ease of operation is just excellent. I mean, it's easy to operate. Uh, if you have it set right, it pretty much just operates itself. You just drive the tractor. I mean, it's really great. The two features that come to mind on the baler are the mega wide pickup and the cover edge net wrap. Uh, the mega wide pickup, the way it's designed, it's a low profile pickup that just, it almost gives it no option but to take the hay. And the cover edge net wrap is the simplest design on the market. And once people thread it in about five seconds, they realize that it's, it's pretty easy to use. Beyond the field, the working relationship Richard has developed with his John Deere dealer has delivered real value in terms of keeping his green gear up and running. One of the main times that, that comes to mind is Richard had a baler problem there one day and I think it was about 7 or 7.30 that evening and I came out and we kind of dissected a roll problem there on the baler and we got it fixed and squared away and got him back going so we were happy to do it. Reliability speaks for itself. You know, when you need something, you want them to be there to support you. But the accessibility is just excellent. You know, in today's world, everybody expects you to be very accessible at the drop of a finger. And, you know, the good thing about it is if I need something, he'll be very accessible for me. You know, if I'm working a lot of after hours, a lot of my problems may not occur during the normal John Deere hours. But the good thing is I can drop my dealer a text or drop him a phone call in 10 seconds and he can usually steer me in the right direction and I'm back going. So, you know, the reliability and accessibility is just excellent.
The cattle producers in this area are really, really good to work with. Um, they understand that they might not be the only ones having a problem that day, but they expect some support. A lot of their work is done after hours, um, you know, five, six, seven o'clock at night, and, and we're here to support them, and that's part of the job, and that's what we try to do. Whether it's in the hay fields or checking on their cattle, Richard and Molly have an eye on their farm's future, and they aren't shy about sharing their appreciation for the equipment that helps them get their work done time after time. If my neighbor came to me and asked me about equipment, or why I have John Deere, I would just have to simply say, it's kind of nostalgic, but it's just simply the best. It's my opinion, and I bleed green like a lot of people, but it's reliable and you can actually get the job done. In Central Kentucky, I'm Matt Fleck, reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Now, if you'd like to learn more about what's happening with NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, you can find us on Facebook. Be sure to like our page and we'll keep you updated with photos, details on upcoming shows, and much more. And it's a great way to connect with other cattlemen and women all across the country. So check us out on Facebook. Still ahead, we'll have the latest from Baxter Black. Plus, see how an Oklahoma cattle operation makes use of John Deere gear to help get their chores done quicker. Stay with us. As a stocker operator, your job is to turn forage into profit. With the right implant, you can. Revlor G improves grazing performance for 150 days, the same length as the typical grazing period. And it's dosed for stockers' maturity levels, adding up to an extra 23 pounds. See why Revlor G is the number one choice in stocker implants at RevlorG.com. A withdrawal period has not been established in pre-ruminating calves. Do not use in calves to be processed for veal. Hello friends and welcome to the NCBA's Cattlemen's Call podcast. Now the goal of this podcast is to focus on the people in the beef industry. We all have stories to tell. We all have successes and failures. And it's always great to talk about all the hard work that we put in to our operations in our industry. So we're taking the time to talk about what everyone else is talking about for cattlemen and women to share what's on their minds. And make sure and subscribe to the Cattlemen's Call podcast today. Welcome back. For many producers, drought is a near constant enemy, reducing forage and hay production. Brian Baxter has a story of one Oklahoma veterinarian and cattleman whose John Deere equipment has helped him survive challenging times. There's no doubt Justin McCrary is one busy guy. He runs his own veterinary hospital and he tends his own farming and cattle operation in West Central Oklahoma. I've been a veterinarian for the last 22 years, graduated from vet school in 1995. Uh, shortly thereafter, I took over my uncle's farming and uh, ranching business. It was a small operation, and uh, after his passing, I uh, purchased it from the estate. I have a cow-calf operation, on average about 150 head of cows. I raise uh, some small grains for hay and grazing. I have a little bit of alfalfa, uh, improved and native grasses uh, for pasture. As a full-time veterinarian, Justin has watched his fellow cattle producers in Oklahoma endure difficult times the past several years. Some of the challenges we've had in this area over the past years, is we've had some severe drought. We've been drought stricken. Uh, a lot of my, my customers from the veterinary clinic, as well as myself, we had to sell down our cows and our cow numbers. Uh, we're working on rebuilding those numbers back to where we were prior and where we want to be in the future. In fact, in much of the Southern Plains, getting any kind of forage or hay put up these past few years has been a challenge. So during those drought years, uh, hay quality was uh, average at best and uh, quantity was below normal. So we really, we struggled to find a good source of nutrition for our cows that we had remaining, uh, selling down those numbers and keeping the, the pastures stocked appropriately for drought conditions helped us get through those times without having the extra amount of hay that we really needed. Even with these challenges, Justin, like so many of his fellow cattle producers, is committed to staying in the business and working with the best equipment to put up all the hay they can. I could probably buy hay cheaper, but I don't know what the TDN, what the protein levels of those hay are going to be. 
I'd rather have my own equipment manage my forage the way I want it managed and put up the hay that I want to put up in the times that it needs to be put up. My John Deere equipment has been there for me. I'm a busy, busy person. At the end of the day, I want to be able to get in my piece of equipment, whether it's a wind rower or a tractor or a skid loader, and I want to be, have it there so I can rely on it. When it comes to equipment you can rely on, Justin found a winner in his John Deere tractor. I've got a uh, 6140R tractor. Uh, just perfect size and horsepower for my mid-size operation. I use it for uh, raking hay, baling hay, uh, do some dirt work with it. A lot of uh, stacking and hauling hay, we use, uh, use that tractor to load and haul hay with. It's a very comfortable, comfortable tractor to use. At the end of the day, after a long day at the vet clinic, it's nice to get into a piece of equipment that, that rides smooth, it's comfortable. It's like driving a, a vehicle rather than a, a tractor. Uh, and that's very important to me, especially if I'm going to have a long evening on a tractor in the hay field. The field cruise option on that tractor is, uh, is excellent. You don't have to adjust your RPMs to match your baling speed. Set it, set the RPM to where you want it, and go. It stays at that RPM no matter what kind of wind rows you're in, heavy hay, light hay. Uh, excellent fuel uh, saver to have that um, field cruise option. Another outstanding feature on this tractor is called the JD Link. JD Link or John Deere Link is a uh, it's a great uh, communication tool from the from the tractor to the uh, dealer to myself. We can look at that information and we can look at fuel usage codes that the computer might be throwing. We can also locate that tractor uh, if it's been stolen, which my tractor and baler were stolen, and we use JD Link to recover that tractor and baler. Uh, we found it uh, over 50 miles away from where it was at when I left it. Uh, we found that tractor in less than 30 minutes. And as is true for cattle producers who are growing their own hay, when it's time to be in the field, they need to know they can count on their John Deere dealer to be there with whatever they need. The service side of it, just, uh, we're always there. We can bring you parts, bring you wrap. We actually have a 569 of our own that we run, so I'm very familiar with it. You guys can call me with questions and I can usually walk them through it. And if I can't, we've got an excellent hay man at Weatherford that uh, will sure get them up and running. Western Equipment's been, for, been there for me uh, uh, through some tough times and, and some really good times. Um, whether I need service, parts, uh, if I need to talk to a sales guy, one phone call, even after hours, I can get a hold of my salesman after hours. And, uh, they've been really good to me, always there for me. They know they can call me anytime, day or night. Uh, I'll, I've always answered the phone and, and walk them through it or help them out and get them back going. Uh, more than one occasion, I've took parts out of my own operation to get somebody going in the middle of the night that was broke down trying to beat a rain. And we do what we have to do to get them going. In Oklahoma, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Another great reason to join NCBA is the chance to read the National Cattleman. It provides timely news and articles about the issues and events affecting the beef industry. A subscription is included free of charge when you become a member. Joining is easy. Just call 866-233-3872 or you can visit the website ncba.org. Up next, it's time for our good friend, Baxter Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stressors that trigger bovine respiratory disease are all around. So when you spot BRD in your herd, turn to Suprevo, the fast that lasts. Suprevo is rapidly absorbed in as little as 45 minutes and lasts up to 28 days. Because in the race against BRD, you need to win. Ready, set, Suprevo. In case of human injection, seek immediate medical advice for use in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle only. For prescribing information, talk to your veterinarian or visit Zuprevo.com. At Leachman Cattle, we're committed to building more profitable cattle. As a third generation seed stock producer, our family has been in this business for over 80 years. Today, we have the best technology ever to build more profitable cattle. Our dollar profit index is a leader in the industry to help you balance all the traits that drive your bottom line. Give us a call or go to www.leachman to learn more. We know you're up before the dawn. 
because the cattle rise before the sun. And you spend long hours in the saddle because the herd isn't always over the next rise. And you care for the land because you know it takes care of your family. And we know you do great work. And it's time to tell that story to the marketplace. I am I Global is here to help you do just that. I was making a big circle one spring morning. My horse picked up when I started back down over the ridges and the smaller canyons. The view was magnificent. I took out my camera, dismounted, and began sweeping the landscape. Seeking the right composition, I was snapping away. I stepped back, my spurs hit an obstacle, and I sat backside first into the welcoming arms of prickly Paris Maximus as big as a barca lounger. I was alone. No cell phone, three miles from the truck and pinned to a cactus like a butterfly on a board. Visions of old westerns flashed through my mind. The lone ranger pinned down by gunfire, whistling for silver. Shrek calling, donkey, donkey. Alvin screaming for the chipmunks. I tried to entice my horse to come to me, hand me his reins and pull me out, but his only reply was to take a step away. I thought I heard a chortle. I managed to unfasten myself from the cactus and I came loose like Velcro. I unhooked and dropped my left chap leg. I couldn't drop my pant leg because it was pinned to my body in a location outside of my peripheral vision. When the pant leg finally came loose, I repeated the tentative tactile search over the stickery battlefield. It took several minutes. Many thoughts went through my mind as I stood there, as Marty Robbins would say. Pulling myself back together, so to speak, I climbed back on my horse and tested several positions, seeking comfort. To walk would not be the cowboy way. Eventually, I adopted a sort of horizontal straddle with my right boot still in the stirrup, my head between his ears, and my left hip glaring like a solar panel toward the sun. I looked like a scarred hood ornament on a 49 Mercury. Back at the house, I doctored myself, but I live in fear that some unmanned spy satellite photos are pinned on a bulletin board beneath the Pentagon and identified as a suspicious infiltrator disguised as a sunbathing acrobat. This is Baxter Black from out there. Thanks, Baxter. We always enjoy your contributions to our show. We'll have more Cattlemen and Cattlemen right after this. Stay with us. Now a BQA tip from the Beef Quality Assurance Program. One of the first things we need to do when we receive a new set of calves is determine the risk of these cattle for developing respiratory disease. We can buy calves at a very low risk or calves at a very high risk. And this difference is based mostly upon source of the calves, are they direct from a ranch, are they purchased through a livestock auction and they're commingled, the age of the calves, the younger the calf, the greater the risk of respiratory disease, and also any prior history of prevention practices that the calves have had. You know, have they been vaccinated previously and so forth. So as we think about how we're going to process those calves, let's work with our veterinarian to determine what's going to be useful and helpful to the calves and also be cost effective. There's several other things we do to calves that are stressful and stress of course increases the risk of bovine respiratory disease or pneumonia. Such things as castration, uh, managing horns, branding and so forth need to be done with great skill and, and be done in a manner that will result in the least amount of stress as possible on these calves. And finally, acclimating calves to the new environment. So instead of just turning calves loose and then we ride in and look for sick calves every day, develop a practice of acclimating these calves to you and your horse or your four-wheeler or walking in these calves depending on how you check them so that when we check calves or we move them from one place to another, it's the least stress possible on the animals. Find out more about Beef Quality Assurance at BQA.org. Welcome back. One important step you can take to ensure that we as cattle producers can pass on our land and legacy 
is by joining me as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. I've seen firsthand how every day the NCBA staff is working to protect the interests of all cattle producers all across the country, but they can't do it alone. Become a member today. Just call 1-866-233-3872 or visit the website ncba.org. It's time once again for one of my favorite segments on the show, Legacy Photos, as we check out some amazing shots submitted to us by families from all across the country. Let's take a look. Want to see your photo on Cattleman to Cattleman? You can submit your favorite shots a couple of ways. Either message them to us on the Cattleman to Cattleman Facebook page or email them to c2c at beef.org. Include your ranch or farm name and your hometown and we may use them on a future episode. Well, that's our time for this week's special John Deere edition of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week, right here on RFD TV.